You know, if one looks at the input of science when it comes to foreign policy, and certainly I'm going to focus on climate change as an important factor, then I think there are several things that science could provide by way of developing policies for the future. Uh, firstly, we've got to create the distortions of the present. And today, everyone knows that climate change policy, particularly as it comes from some of the most powerful countries in the world, from top downwards, uh, has a huge amount of inertia inbuilt into it. Because you have certain production and consumption patterns, you have infrastructure, which you don't want to change, you don't, don't want to give up profits. So I think the first thing that science needs to do is to provide inputs on how the current distortions can be corrected. The second area that I feel, as far as climate change is concerned, is to look at future threats. And I want to make it very clear that, you know, in the IPCC, we brought out a special report in 2011 on, uh, essentially, on uh, extreme events and disasters. And that, to my mind, was a game changer. Because otherwise, before that, everybody thought climate change is a slow and steady increase in temperatures. But now we brought it to the attention of the global public and the scientific community that you're going to see a large uh, increase in the frequency and intensity of extreme events. And we are witnessing that today. The third area that I think uh, science can provide major inputs on as far as climate change and solutions are concerned is what one defines as the collective action problem. Uh, it's not one country or two countries that can solve this problem. We came up with an agreement in Paris and that clearly required a lot of diplomacy. Uh, the Chinese president, the US president and several others were involved in hammering out that agreement. So I think it's crucially important that we define what needs to be done and how quickly it needs to be done. I'm not going into details, but I just want to highlight a few factors. We need to cut down on emissions very rapidly and drastically. And in fact, in the fourth assessment report, which came out in 2007, we had highlighted the fact that you need to see that emissions peak in 2020. We are next door to that. And I think unless in 2020 we can bring about a reduction in emissions or peaking them, having them peak and then bring them down later, we may have extreme difficulty in finding the technologies, the infrastructure arrangements by which we you, can you've, reduce. You've it. emphasized the, and I agree with the importance of transmitting some of these messages to the public and to uh, and people who have some uh, element of, of authority. What is the best way to do that? We've been trying to do that. Well, Al Gore made a movie. Um, a lot of other people have gotten up on podia. Uh, I think many people who read a responsible newspaper know something about what the effects are predicted to be. Yet somehow we have failed to galvanize the world's community to do something substantial. So what is, in your opinion, the best kind of approach as a communicator and what can governments do to urge things on, even if the, the, the larger community is not yet on board? I think you really need a group of scientists who start, if I may use the term, preach, to those who are not necessarily converted, but who can be convinced on what requires to be done. And I'm afraid I have had this experience in the scientific community when I spoke to my colleagues about spreading the message and taking things to the public. They would say, it's your job to save the world. We're here to write papers and do our research. I think the scientific community, at least some elements of them, have to change their attitude. And I think one of the things we have to consider here, and I want to respond to some people who would like to make a comment, but one of the things we have to consider is there are people out there making counter arguments um, because they have very large financial Absolutely. investments. Uh, and a lot of money behind them yeah. and a lot of political support because they've paid for those politicians to get in office. So um, I think that's got to be part of yeah, the formula. That's something I know of very well. Uh, you're absolutely right. 
And therefore, in some sense, it's like what the tobacco industry did. Yes, it's very similar. So, it's, so it's Margaret, identity. do you want to make an intervention here? 